I'm one day I'll go in the studio. I'm going to put this here for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, it needs it or wants mm -hmm. it. And it's really being able to like communicate. Like I think an artist needs to be able to communicate with what the painting is doing. And I think the painting gives feedback to what the artist. And so you have to really be intuitive and connected to that, you know, that, that relationship. For so, sure. That's, yeah. that's rad. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be at the Mark Woolley. Uh, in November, in November. Yeah, November, December, and then uh, you said you had one at the Goodfoot coming up too. Yeah, Goodfoot is that's gonna be a little bit different. That one's in um, April. Was it May? April? It's actually in May. It's on, on last Thursday in May. And that one, I'm gonna be doing um, something I haven't done for a while. I think you, you saw one earlier, the 3D, and it's kind of a um, these are a pain in the butt <laughs> to do these things. They really take so much work, but they really, they all become like a labor of love because it's like, it's so hands on and it, it almost borderlines on craft, you know, because I'm doing mm -hmm. this, but I'm going to be doing the, the wanders, the walking house pieces that are, um, and several of them are going to be three dimensional. So I'm actually cutting, um, drilling him, you know, carving things out of clay and making these, this kind of walking cityscapes that are actually 3D, you know, or 2D anyway, they're going to hang on the wall, but there'll be some serious relief and dimension depth into those. Um, that's exciting. For sure. Because it's going to be, it, to mix it up. And Have you only done a series like that one time before? Mm -hmm, one time, and it was at, um, it was at the Good Foot, it was actually a show called um, outside the box, thinking outside the box, which I have, I have a big sign up there, think outside the box, to remind me to think outside the box because sometimes I get into a routine um, mm -hmm. of just making, um, I think a lot of artists do that, actually get into a routine and making it similar and, and these variations are so similar that the paintings almost become the same, you know what I mean? Because it's just mm -hmm. like, are you doing this and changing this a bit? And so it's it's really um, necessary to step it up a couple notches, you know, every now and, and, make, and make sometimes just random radical departures from what you're doing. So um, this is going back to something I had a lot of uh, fun with doing that show it was two or three years ago. And I made six pieces for the show and all, six or seven. I have one I kept and the rest sold. Um, and that one um, was just because I, just don't want to get rid of it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, I, it's for the right price maybe, but no, it was a piece and it was actually one of um, trademark things, you know, when you have like a milestone mm -hmm. and when you're doing something and you're just like, wow, let's try something completely off the wall from what I've done, and then that was that piece, and so I'm, you know, holding on to that, but I'm going to do like, hopefully six or seven more for this. I don't think I asked, where did you get your master's of fine arts? Um, from Kent State University. Kent State? Yeah, Kent State um, was going in, and that's when I was going, um, going to school, and it became, um, I don't know if it was graduate school, it taught, it, you know, for, the, for, you know, in general, but it was my, my consensus that it was, you know, generally there were a lot of professors that were from the same era, and so the work I was doing there radically changed, and it wasn't really my input that was changing it you know what i mean because i was mm -hmm. in, you know, i was in the academia environment and um so the work i was doing that's when it became even larger and more abstract and practically minimal and one of our, our shows um was the student faculty exhibit and you couldn't tell a, a, a painting from i mean literally you could walk through the show and you thought it was one artist or so it became mm -hmm. like a group effort and i realized that that wasn't um where I wanted to be or what I wanted to do you know I wasn't I wanted I didn't want that you know right. I wanted to be more and so I kind of um you know set that all aside and I learned what I needed to learn in, in many regards but I, I learned more after I left about how I wanted to, to go about it and where I wanted to mm -hmm. be as an artist so. um you took your your sketches of your uh buildings and uh cityscapes like this and you decided that you wanted to paint them um, yeah. but you how did you you said uh, it, you had to learn how to get the detail what yeah was, what was the process of learning um, that was a trial that was trial by error for sure I've been doing a lot of you know it was easy to do the, the, the detail I mean it just came natural with pen and ink mm -hmm. anybody who's picks up and doodle and you know and you cross hatch and pointillism and all that stuff you can get lost for hours you know and weeks just doing detail and drawing and it becomes basically kind of second nature when you're doing that but in painting there was a gigantic leap to try to get that level of detail you know I was doing these these vast you know 
landscapes before and everything else you know and I was trying to like focus in so some of my early stuff was simply just a landscape and a canvas with a tree and I would just try to really detail on the bark you know something like that try to get the bark as accurate as I can I'd look at like photographs of bark and then look at real trees and the bark close up to see if I can mimic that and it was a process of you know finding the smallest brushes I can find actually letting my brushes you know to many artists, this way that they hate it. Well, I leave my brushes soaked in water all the time. I never clean them. <laughs> every teacher hates that. Every you know, every I have artist friends come over like chuck your brushes. I'm like I like them like that because they they end up forming. You know, this is my trade secret here. They form these these little like, these little curls on the end because when the brushes are wet and they're like soaking. Do I have one soaking? This is too fast to tell. But they um. Yeah, that one has a little bit of a curl too. Yeah, see how terrible these are? But they sit and they form this kind of like natural little curl. I don't know if you can see that, that hook. And it takes a while, and that's when the brushes are just about getting perfect. So when I'm working on them, you can see the bow on the, on the handle too, that you get <laughs> this element with your bristle. It becomes a, you know, a, a tool that you need, so I don't want straight bristles. And of course, you buy a brand new brush, they have straight bristles. Mm -hmm. And so it was part of, you know, part of that was accidental, and part of it was laziness. <laughs> you know, so part of it, that it really ended up working. And so now I make sure that, you know, my brushes get that little hook. I trim some of the bristles away. You know, so I can never actually find them small enough. I want some of my cut in angles. And so it was a process of learning, um, you know, what's going to work, how I'm going to get those fine lines, how I'm going to get that technique and stuff. And, um, you know, that's ever changing too. Sometimes I just, I can't, you know, I'd like to even get a finer line than I get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I have, you, have you ever seen some of the, like, Chinese artists that use a paintbrush with only, like, one? Mm -hmm. like, There's the one that paints with the cat whiskers too, you know, a single cat whisker, which is like, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm not. No, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't. I, you know, it's like, I'm, you know, I have to work, you know, I don't even wear, you know, bifocal, I mean, or, or, or magnifying glass. I mean, I hold my work pretty, you know, when I'm working on a piece, um, like say this, you know, I'm pretty much painting like this most of the time. It's not like it's on the table. I mean, I'm actually holding it. Wow. And this is how I paint, you know, 90% of the time, you know, with the small ones. Obviously, the big ones I can't. Right. But, um, but so, and it's, you know, it's, it's comforting and kind of meditative, and I can actually really get lost in the piece, you know, and stuff like that. And so, um, that's how I work on those. Right on. Are you a full-time artist? Yeah. I mean, I was working briefly for um, when the economy tanked and everything tanked, and mm. some of the galleries I had up in Astoria and stuff are no longer and um, some things and things got rough there for a while um that's just part of being an artist i mean you know what i mean it's ups and downs it right. comes and goes it's feast or famine and every artist if you read any historical biography i mean even the greatest of the greats you know um earns valley there were times when they didn't have money and didn't have a place to live right. i have to remind myself that in the grand the grand scope of things you know that and i'm um, so i was working and it wasn't um um, for a few years, and it's actually just recently that I left. Um, I took some time off, and then I had decided not to go back. Um, I had, um, you know, had some crisis in the family back home. I've been dealing with that, and so something had to be cut loose, and it was the thing that was the least important, even though it was like, you know, it was in a sense a comfort zone thing but it was actually the least important thing and the least the thing i identified with as being a person and you know i think um i think my creativity was suffering and i was getting into this um this routine you know so never again <laughs> something else i have a lot of stuff and a lot of ideas i just feel like literally like explosive right now with ideas and stuff and i think it's because of that detachment right yeah you know, so. how long have you been just working on art but um, even with that little bit of um you know I've been the, the last like day the last day job I had was about four years before that I hadn't worked in eight wow years. so self-employed for eight solid years and I'm like if I did it then I can do it again and right. that was a hard thing but if anybody you know it's it's just always how you know that regular weekly paycheck every week every this and it becomes you know comforting but it also becomes monotonous and it actually starts I think it starts to break down at like a creative person because you can't have 
those artificial restrictions. Mm. You know what I mean, I mean, it, okay, if you need to for a while, right. but there's a period when you're like, look, you know, um, it's kind of like the, the whole bell curve thing that you learn. It's like there's, you know, it starts becoming. It was beneficial in the beginning, but then it then it stops being beneficial. It stops actually being a hindrance. Right. So, yeah. Um, where would you like to see your art go in the future? All over the place. No, I, everywhere. I, every gallery, you know, but in, everywhere. New York, uh, San Francisco. I do have some connections. I'll be showing in San Francisco, you right know, um, in, in the next year for sure. I have shown in some places in New York, some small galleries, but I'm going to have a lot more time to, um, to put some things together um, and actually, you know, try some like major, you know, spend the money and, um, you know, enter some of these major competitions, you know. Um, those things are a little intimidating, you know, but there's some big, you know, big national jury shows and, uh, you know, you have to just get your nerve up to do that. And those, mm -hmm. that's definitely on my, on my playlist for coming up. Um, you know, I want to, um, I want to ex experiment with some other works and stuff and maybe get back into some figurative stuff. You know, I'll be doing a show at the end of the year that's going to be mostly figurative. So that will, that's in the works right now. And that'll be shocking to some, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> shocking to me is if I can still remember how to do it. Um, and then, I, you know, I'd like to, you know, um, I think I'd like to pair up with a little bit more about some writing, like, you know, some writing and do some kind of, comp, you know, another, like a, a book type thing, you know, as an illustrator. Maybe not so much illustrating somebody's book, but working with a writer that actually wants to make a place in the world. Because I think my, my paintings dictate like a place. Right. And they, sure. they lead you into some type of a thing that you don't know the specifics. And so that would be neat. That would be really Excuse neat. Excuse me, as far as a writer. And then I'm, then I'm, you know, paint bigger, paint more. <laughs> you know, definitely larger, more. And I'm... Have you ever done, like, murals on walls? Yeah, I have. I've done um, a few murals. I, I had a really cool mural over on Broadway. It used to be called the Broadway Coffee Trader. And actually, it was like five five walls and a ceiling it was huge and it, um, it was there for several years and um some it was on a couple of different blogs i have some images of it um that got painted over somebody bought it and turned it into like a 